Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be going over fractions and decimals and everything that has to do with them that you might come across on your civil service test or your firefighter entrance exam or something like that. We're going to be going over multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, whole numbers, fractions, decimals, and all sorts of things like that. So the sheet that came along with this, these, those are the exact same problems I'll be working out here on the video. Feel free to print that out and write those questions down on another piece of paper and follow along with me or just watch right now and then come back and work them through so th those are the exact same questions I'll be working on right now so let's go ahead and get go ahead and get started with number one number one the question is 11 minus 3 fifths equals what so a couple things I'm not sure where everybody's at as far as your knowledge of math and fractions but this is referred to as a whole number. When you subtract a fraction from a whole number, what you need to do is turn the whole number into a fraction. In order to do that, we can take 1 away from 11, making it 10 and 5 fifths minus 3 over 5 equals this. So I came up with 5 over 5 because any fraction that's let's say 2 over 2, 3 over 3, 4 over 4, 5 over 5, anything like that is equal to 1. So 5 over 5 is the same thing as 1. So we took 1 away from 11 and made that 5 over 5 and kept the whole number which is now 10. So for this we can just pull the 10 out. We can just leave the 10 over here and then work with just the fractions. So we have 5 over 5 minus 3 over 5. Now that we have just the fractions isolated, now what we're going to do is we're just going to subtract across. So 5 minus 3 is 2 and then you're just going to keep the denominator the same. So 2 over 5. So 5, minus, 5 over 5 minus 3 over 5 is 2 over 5. So now that we have that, we can't forget that we have the whole number over here still. So now we're just going to combine them both, which gives us 10 and 2 fifths. So the answer to 11 minus 3 fifths equals 10 and 2 fifths. If at any point before we go any further in this video that you feel like you are lost or you missed something, feel free to stop, rewind, watch it at your own pace, do whatever you need to do with this video to make sure you understand it and work along with the questions. So we'll clear that one and we'll go on to number two. Number two, we're going to get into addition. Now one thing I should say before we go any further is when you add or subtract fractions, you must always have a common, oh my pen stopped working, there we go, have a common denominator. So since I'm not sure where everyone is at with math, just to review, any fraction, there's the top number and the bottom number. The bottom number is the denominator. The top number is the numerator. Okay, and that's it, that, same, that same rule applies with any fraction, three over five, 1 over 2, 2 over 3, doesn't matter what the fraction is, numerators on top, denominators on the bottom. So whenever we're adding, remember, whenever we're adding or subtracting, common, I'm just going to write denom since I, so I don't have to write it over and over again. So question number 2 on your sheet is 11 and 1 third plus three-fifths equals what? So again, like with the last one, remember, this is the whole number over here. 
we can take this whole number and we can pull it out so we can just work with the fractions. So we'll leave 11 over here. Then what we'll do is we'll bring 1 third down here plus 3 fifths. Now remember our rule, we're adding these fractions so we must have a common denominator. The easiest way to find the common denominator that I have found, now other people will say list out the factors and all those kinds of things, the easiest way that I have found is you can always just multiply by the opposite denominator. By that I mean multiply this times 5 and times 5, multiply this times 3 times 3. So you see what I did there? I multiplied the 5 by this denominator and the 3 by this denominator. So now when you do 1 times 5 right here, that's going to be 5 over and then you have 3 times 5 down here, 15, plus, then you do 3 times 3, 3 times 3 is 9, over 5 times 3 is 15. So now we have our common denominator. Now we can add this fraction. So 9 and 5, if we just add across, is 14 over 15. We keep the same denominator. Remember, we did that work already to get a common denominator. So one third plus three fifths is the same as 14 over 15. Now let's not forget that we have this whole number over here. So now we combine the whole number with the fraction. The final answer is 11 and 14 fifteenths. So our original question of 11 and 1 third plus 3 fifths equals what? It equals 11 and 14 over 15. So feel free to rewind, like I said, and go back if you missed any of that or if you have any confusion about that at all. So on to number three. Number three, we're going to make it a little bit more difficult. We're going to make it, we're going to have three different numbers that will be added together. So we're going to do 7 and 1 half plus 13 and 7 twelfths plus 17 and 1 quarter equals what? So I have found it easiest to pull, as, as I did in the last couple, to just pull the whole numbers out so we could work with just the fractions. Okay, so now I'm going to pull these three guys out, and it's going to be 7 plus 13 plus 17. 7 plus 13 is 20, plus 17 is 37. So that's my answer for the whole number. So I have 37 down here. So now we take the fractions and we work with the fractions. So we have 1 half plus 7 over 12 plus 1 over 4. Now, remember our rule, adding and subtracting common denominator. Always. So 2 can go into 12 just like 4 can go into 12. So the least common denominator, that's another, or lowest common denominator, you'll hear, is whatever the lowest number that all of the denominators can evenly go into. So if you multiply 2 times 6 on the top and bottom, that'll give you 12. If you multiply 12 times 1, that'll give you 12. If you multiply 4 times 3 on the top and bottom, this will give you 12, this will give you 12, this will give you 12. So let's figure these out. Let's rewrite our fractions. So 1 times 6 is 6 over 12, which is equal to 1 half, plus 7 over 12, 7 times 1 right here, 12 times 1 right here. So you have 7 over 12 plus 
1 times 3 is 3. 4 times 3 is 12. See what I did there? So now we have the common denominator for all of them. So now all we're going to do is we're just going to add across the bottom. So we're going to add 6 and 7, 7 and 3. So 7 and 3 is 10 plus 6 equals 16 over 12. This gives us an improper fraction. So I'm going to clear this page just so we have a little more space. But remember, we have 16, 12, actually we can just go to the next page over here. We have 16 tw over 12 over here, and don't forget we have this whole number. So now we have 37 and 16 over 12. So we have to make this improper fraction here, we have to make it proper. So the easiest way we can do that is 12 goes into 16 one time. Okay? So after you do that, you still have 4 left over over 12. What goes bo into both 4 and 12? The easiest number would be 4. So divide it, I'm sorry, divide it by 4. Divide this by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So now you have 1 and 1 third. Don't forget, we still have our whole number over here. So now you add 37 plus 1 and 1 third, which gives you 38 and 1 third. So remember, like I always keep saying, if you need to rewind and rewatch, that's totally fine. Take your time if you missed any of the steps. But the answer to 7 and a half plus 13 and 7 over 12 plus 17 and a quarter is 38 and one third. So moving on to the next question, we're going to make it a little bit more difficult and we're going to add a, we're going to put addition and subtraction both in the same problem. So for this problem, I believe it's number four, we'll have two and one third plus four and five six minus one and one half. So when I do these, what I like to do is I like to split them up. So first thing I'll do is I'll just work with the addition. And as with before, we'll take these whole numbers and we'll move them out of here. So 2 plus 4 equals 6. So we got that taken care of. Now we can work on our fractions. 1 third and 5 six. So 1 over 3 plus 5 over 6. Now remember, as with addition and subtraction, I, and I know I keep saying it, but it's easy to forget, you need to find a common denominator, the least common denominator. So 3 and 6, the least common denominator between the two of them, would be 6, because 3 times 2 is 6, so we're going to multiply 2, and if 6 is the, the least common denominator, we're going to multiply both of these times 1. So we'll do 1 times 2 is 2, over 3 times 2 is 6, plus 5 times 1 is 5, 6 times 1 is 6. So there we go, we got our least common denominator, and we're just going to add all the way across. So 7 over 6. And remember, we already did the work, so we just carry that denominator over. Now in the last, the last problem, we had an improper fraction, and we solved it to make it proper. But because we're not done with our, with our problem yet, we still have this to take care of, we're not going to make that proper yet. But what we are going to do is we're going to combine the 6 and the 7, 6. So we're going to move over to the next page. So we'll have, I'll do it up here, 6 and 7, 6, or I'm sorry, minus 1 and a half. 1, 1, half. So again, we can take care of these whole numbers. 
we can drag them out here. So 6 minus 1 is 5. So now we can work on our fractions. 7 over 6 minus 1 over 2. Remember, lowest common denominator. 2 goes into 6. So the lowest common denominator, again, is going to be 6. So we're going to multiply both of these times 1 to get 6. We're going to multiply both of these by 3. So now we're going to have 3 from here. 2 times 3 is 6. And then we're going to have 6 times 1 is 6 over 7 times 1 is 7. So now we're going to carry the denominators across and we're just going to subtract like normal. 7 minus 3 is 4, so we have 4 sixths. So 7 sixths minus 1 half is 4 sixths. So again, don't forget about our whole number over here. So now we have our answer is 5 and 4 6. Now while this is a good answer and while this is correct, most questions on any test you're going to come across is going to show you a simplified version. So when you simplify the fraction, you find the, the lowest version of that fraction. So think of it this way. The number 2 can go into 4, and the number 2 can go into 6. So I have 5 over here. So divide that by 2. Divide that by 2. So that goes 2 thirds. So the answer is 5 and 2 thirds. So do you see how we got that? 4 sixths is the same as 2 thirds. Divided by 2, divided by 2 equals 2 over 3. So that's 5 and 2 thirds. So the answer to our question from the beginning of 2 and a third plus 4 and 5 sixths minus 1 and a half is 5 and two-thirds. Now moving on to multiplication and division, there's going to be a lot of similarities, but there are some important things to keep in mind. So for question number five, we're going to do five and three-eighths, pen's not working, there we go, times three and one-third. Now as you remember, with the addition and the subtraction, what we could do is we could just isolate the whole numbers and then work on the fractions. When we're going to multiply these mixed numbers like this, what we have to do is turn these into improper fractions. The best and easiest way to do that is like this. So we'll have 5 and 3 eighths. We'll rewrite it so it's a little bit easier. 3 and 1 third. Now you're going to multiply the denominator times the whole number. So right here. So 5 times 8 equals 40. And so whatever the total is, you're going to add the numerator. So 40 plus 3 equals 43 over 8. So do you see how we did that? 8 times 5, numerator times whole number, and then that comes to 40, and 40 plus 3. So 43 over 8. So let's do the same thing over here. We're going to multiply denominator times whole number to get 9, and then we're going to add that plus the numerator. So 9 plus 1 equals 10, and it's over 3. So our new improper fraction will look more like this. It will look like 43 over 8 times 10 over 3. Now you can do it by just multiplying straight across with this, but a lot of times, and it makes it easier for you later on, if you simplify it. If you can figure out what number can go into both of these to make it the least common terms. So as we did before, you can divide this by 2, and you can divide this by 2. 3 and 43, not so much, so those will have to stay. So now, 43 over 4 
times 5 over 3. And then just like we did with the addition, you're just going to go straight across. So 43 times 5, we can work that out over here if you want. We can do 43 times 5. 5 times 3 is 15, carry the 1. 5 times 4 is 20 plus 1 is 215. So 43 times 5 equals 215 over 4 times 3 is 12. So now we have 215 over 12. So let's go over to the next page where we have a little more room. I'm going to write it up here. 215 over 12 is our answer. So remember, this is an improper fraction, so we're going to need to simplify it. So we'll do how many times 12 goes into 215. So let's do that. We'll do 215 divided by 12. 12 can't go into 2, so we put a 0 there. However, 12 can go into 21 one time. So that's 12. Underneath that, 21 minus 12 is 9. We bring down the 5, and we have 95. 12 can go into 95 7 times. So we have 17 up here. 12 times 7 is 84. 84 from 15 is 11. Now 12 is too big for 11. It can't fit in to 11. So now this is our new whole number because 12 can go into 215 17 times. So now it's gonna, that's going to be our whole number. And then this is going to be our new numerator. 11 over keep our denominator 12 so remember when you're dividing you're trying to see how many times 12 can go into 215 so you divide 215 divided by 12 and you get the answer of 17 17 is now your new whole number and what's the remainder so what's left over is now your new numerator and you keep the same denominator as before. So the new answer, 11 over 12, oh, pen again, there we go. So 5 and 3 eighths times 3 and a third is 17 and 11 twelfths. Now with division, we're going to do it exactly the same except for one small step. So if we look at number 6, we have 10 and 7 eighths divided by 4 and 1 third equals what? Like I said, it's almost identical to multiplication, so what we're going to do is turn these into improper fractions. And as we remembered how to do it before, we multiply these two, the whole number here and the denominator here and then add that plus the numerator so 8 times 10 is 80 plus 7 is 87 over 8 that is your new improper fraction for 10 and 7 eighths divided by same thing here 4 times 3 is 12 plus 1 is 13 over 3. So now you have 87 over 8 divided by 13 over 3. Now when we divide fractions, it's like I said, it's the same as multiplication, only now we're going to do what's known as we're going to flip the second fraction. So this fraction 
is known, we're going to flip that from 13 over 3, and that's going to become 3 over 13. So remember this rule. When you divide, you multiply by the reciprocal. So here's what I mean. We'll redraw this on the next page. So we got 87, 8, 87 over 8 divided by 13 over 3. So we have 87 over 8 divided by 13 over 3. So when we divide these, we're going to multiply. So this now becomes 87 over 8. Multiply by the reciprocal times 3 over 3. 13. And then from here, it's going to be the exact same thing that it was before. So now we're just going to multiply straight across here, straight across here. So we'll do 87 times 3. 3 times 7 is 21. We're going to carry the 2. 8 times 3 is 24, plus 2 is 26. So 261. So this is going to equal. 261 over 13 times 8. So we got 13 times 8. 8 times 3 is 24. Carry the 2. 8 times 1 is 8 plus 2 is 10 over 104. So our new fraction is now 261 over 104. Now remember that's the correct answer, but they're probably going to want you to simplify it to the simplest terms. So, like we did before, we're going to divide 261 by 104. So let's do this. We'll do 261, 104. So 104 can't go into 2, so we'll put a 0. And 104 can't go into 26. So we'll put a 0, but 104 can go into 261, and it can go in there two times. So 261 minus 104, or I'm sorry, minus 208, sorry, let me erase that. I got everything all confused. So. 104 times 2 is now 208. So you see how we got that? 104 goes into 261 two times, mm -hmm. and 104 times 2 is 208. So now you subtract them, and you have 53. Now 104 obviously can't go into 53. That's too big. So remember, just like the last one, this is now your whole number. So the answer is 2. This is now your numerator, so that's going to be the number on top, 53 over, we keep the same denominator as we did over here, 104. So our whole number, our numerator, and our denominator. So the answer to the question is 2 and 53 over 104. So the original question being 10 and 7 eighths divided by 4 and a third is now 2 and 53 over 104. So now let's get into some decimals. And in my opinion, I actually think decimals are easier, but I'll let you be the judge. So number seven, number seven, we have change. Three and three fourths to a decimal. Now, some people out there, this might be really easy because they'll realize that three fourths is the same as 75%. But if you didn't know that and you needed to work your way through the problem, this is how you would do it. Kind of like we talked about before how you could separate the whole number, you can do that again here. So we can bring this three over here. And just leave it alone. Now we're going to want to work with this 3 fourths. And to figure out what the decimal of 3 fourths would be, 
you divide 3 by, well, that's really messy. Let's try that again. Let's erase this. Let's divide 3 by 4. Okay? So 4 obviously cannot go into 3. It's too big. So what we can do is we can put a decimal point here and add a 0. Now 4 can go into 30 7 times. 4 times 7 is 28. Now you subtract and you have 2. Now 4 obviously still can't go into 2, but what you can do is you can add another 0 and bring it down. 4 can go into 20, and it can go into 20 5 times. 4 times 5 is 20, which leaves you with 0. So you already have your whole number, which is 3, over here, and you just combine it with your new decimal over here to get a total of 3.75. So converting three and three quarters to a decimal is the same as 3.75. Pretty easy. But what do you do if you run into a question like number eight? So let's clear this off, clear all pages. Number eight says convert five sevenths, so five over seven to a percentage. Then round to the nearest tenth. So essentially they're going to want you to convert this to a decimal and then convert the decimal into a percentage little more difficult but definitely something that's still doable so let's move over to the next page so what we're gonna do is we have five sevenths five over seven and we're gonna go about it the same way we did with the last one so we're gonna divide five by seven so just like with the last problem with three over four seven is obviously too big to go into five so what do we do put the decimal point here just put it right up here. And then we can add a zero. Seven can go into 50, and it can go into 50 seven times. That gives us 49. Seven times seven is 49. Subtract 50 from 49, that gives us one. Seven obviously is too big for one, so we'll put another zero here as a placeholder and drop it down. Seven can go into 10, and it can go into 10 one time. So 7 times 1 is 7. That leaves us 3. Again, 7 is too big for 3, so we add a 0. We drop it down. 7 can go into 30 four times. So 7 times 4 is 28. That leaves us with two. Same thing, seven's too big for two. We're gonna add a zero, and we're gonna drop it all the way down. Seven can go into 20 twice, and that leaves us with 14. And I'm not gonna go through all the work, but I'd imagine that this, this question or this, this division problem could go on for a long time. But we only need to round to the nearest tenth. So, when we're trying to find out a percentage, whatever our decimal is, which in this case is 0.7142, we want to multiply it by 100. So if we do all the work, we would have a bunch of zeros. So 0 times 2, 0 times 4, 0 times 1, 0 times 7, so 3, 4, placeholder, and then 0 times 2, 0 times 4, 0 times 1, 0 times 7, so 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we're going to need two placeholders. 
And then we're going to do 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 4 is 4. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 7 is 7. So again, this is pretty basic division at this point. Apparently I need lines because I'm going sideways, so I hope you can still read that. Anyways, that gives us zero when we add all these up. Two, four, one, seven. And we have four decimal places to move. Okay, so we're going one, two, three, four. So this turns into 71.5. Four, two. Now if we, if we remember, if we go back to the other page, it says convert to the nearest tenth. So actually let's go back over here. 71.42, we have to round it to the nearest tenth. So if you're new to rounding numbers, this place, the first, the first place, the first number to the right of the decimal is the tenth. The second one is the hundredth. The third one, which in this case we don't have, is the thousandth. And so on. So when you round numbers, for those of you that may not know, we're going to round to the nearest tenth. So when we're rounding to the tenth, we look at the number after it. And if this number is less than five, so 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, this number stays the same. So in this case, 71.4%. However, if you're rounding and the number to the right is 5 or above, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, this number bumps up 1. So that would become 71.5. Now that's a different math concept for a different class and a different tutoring session, but just for this, to figure out to convert 5 sevenths to a decimal, we divided 5 by 7 and got 0 0.7142, multiplied it by 100 to get the percentage, moved the decimal place 4 times because you're 4 decimal points here, 1, 2, 3, and 4, which gave us 71.42. 71.42 rounded to the nearest tenth, which is here, this number right here. Since two is less than five, we keep it at 71.4%. Now that question was a little more involved and a little more difficult than some of the others, so hopefully you don't get something like that on your civil service exam or your firefighter interest exam. However, if you do, now you know how to go about it. So moving on, to number nine. Number nine, and actually number 10, we're gonna get into the addition and subtraction of decimals. So this is pretty easy, and just like with the others, there's a rule to remember. When we're adding or we're subtracting decimals, the best way to do it is to line up the decimal points. Okay, so just remember that when you're working on these. So number nine is 11.72 plus 17.912 equals what? So pretty easy, just like I said, you have 11.72 plus 17, remember we want to line up these decimal points, 0 0.912. Now when you have an open space over here, you can just put in a zero as a placeholder if you'd like. And you're just going to add simple addition. Zero plus two is two. Two plus one is three. Seven plus nine is 16. We're going to carry that one up here. Seven plus one is eight. Plus one is nine and one and one is two. And then we're just gonna bring that decimal straight down. So our answer is 29.632. Easy, right? Now let's try one with subtraction. So if we clear this, 
Number 10 on your sheet is 75.12 minus 68.476 equals what? So same idea, 75.12 minus 68.476. Six. Now remember, we need we need a number here so we can just put in a zero as a placeholder. So I'm sure you know how to do simple subtraction, but in case you don't, or in case you don't remember, maybe it's been a while, all you're gonna do, since zero is obviously smaller than six, you're just gonna borrow from this two, turn this into a one, and add it here. So now 10 minus six is four. One is obviously smaller than seven, so you're gonna borrow this one turn that into a zero. 11 minus seven is four. Zero is obviously smaller than four, so you're gonna borrow from the five, that turns into a four, add a one. 10 minus four is six. Just bring those decimal points straight down here. Four is smaller than eight, so borrow from that. 14 minus eight is six. And then six minus six, of course, is zero. So your answer, 6.644. So 75.12 minus 68.476 equals 6.644. Now if we move into multiplication and division, it gets a little more difficult, but certainly nothing we can't handle. So question number 11 is 4.21 times point 2, 4, 2 equals what? Now, remember, with the, with the addition and the subtraction, we wanted to line up the decimal points. With multiplication and division, we don't need to worry about it. So we can literally write it out, and it's just basic, basic uh, multiplication, like you should already know. So 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. Put a 0 to hold the place. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 4 is 16. 2 zeros to hold the place. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. So now we're just going to add these up. 2, 0, and 0 is still 2. 4 and 4 is 8 plus 0 is 8. 8 and 8 is 16 plus 2 is 18. Carry the 1. 6 and 1 is 7 plus 4 is 11. Carry the 1. 8 plus 1 is 9 plus 1 is 10. So 10. Now, as I remember before, a couple questions ago when we were, when we were working with the one changing it to a percentage, we need to count up how many decimal places we have here and then move the decimal accordingly. So we have one, two decimal places here, and we have one, two, three decimal places here. So that's a total of five decimals. So now, oh, there we go, we're gonna move this decimal place one, two, three, four, and five. So the final answer to 4.21 times 0.242 is 1.01882. Pretty easy. Now division is a little bit more involved, but still nothing we can't handle like the last one. So question number 12 asks 20.445 divided by 4.7 equals what? So when we draw that out here, it's going to look like this. 20.445 divided by 4.7. Now. If there's nothing else you remember from division, it's this. When you are trying to divide this number 
into this number, it's very, very difficult when you have a decimal here, unless you have a calculator. And if they're letting you use a calculator on your test, well, then you're really lucky because a lot of tests typically don't let you use a calculator. But what you can do is this, is you can multiply them by 10, which essentially would just move this decimal point here and make this number 47, but also move this decimal point here, which would make this 204.45. So it would now look like this, 47 divided by 204.45. Still can throw you off a little bit just seeing a decimal in there, but much, much, much easier to divide 47 into 204.45 than trying to mess with 4.7. So let's go over to the next page and we'll work that problem out. So we have 47 divided by 204.45. So 47 is obviously too big for 20, so that won't work but 47 can go into 204. So we couldn't do 47 into 20, but 47 can go into 204. And 47 can go into 204, I believe, uh, four times. So 47, and we can work it out over here if you want, 47 times four, seven times four is 28, four times four uh, is 16 plus two, is 18 it should be 188 so 47 times so 4 times 47 is 188 now you subtract them 204 from 188 gives you 16 and you just bring down that 4 because obviously 47 is too big for 16 so you bring down that 4 now 164 divided by 47. 47 can go into 164 um, three times. So three, we can work that out over here if you want. 47 times three. Seven times three is 21. Carry the two. Three times four is 12. Plus two is 13, 14. So 141. So now we do three times 47 is 141 and that gives us 23 and again 47 is too big for 23 so we'll drop down the 5 and we'll make it 235 so 47 could go into 235 I believe five times yeah so we'll work that out. so I'll show the work over here 47 times Five. Seven times five is 35, carry the three. Uh, five times four is 20, plus three is 23. So that, foot, that fits just right. 47 can go into 235, so five times 47 is 235, which leaves us with zero. So just like with the, um, the addition and subtraction, we're just gonna take this decimal point and put it right here. Just move it straight up. So 47 divided by 204.45 equals 4.35, which is the exact same number that you have right there. So what do you do if you get a question like number 13 that brings all of these principles of decimals together. So let's clear all these pages and we'll go back to page one. And number 13 asks 22 plus 16.86 times 4.7 minus 1.17 equals what? Now, when you have questions that have addition, multiplication and division, and subtraction all mixed together, you need to remember something called the order of operations. 
and this is important. Now the order of operations states that division and multiplication come first and addition and subtraction come second. Meaning, since 22 plus 16.86, you wouldn't just, if you're going to solve this problem, you're not just going to go left to right. You're going to start with the multiplication, which would be this problem right here, 16.86 times 4.7. You're going to solve for this plus 22 minus 1.17, and then you're going to work left to right to get the final answer. If you don't do it that way, if you just go left to right, you will end up getting a different answer and it will be wrong. And chances are this is going to be a multiple choice. This is going to be a multiple choice test and one of the multiple choice answers would be whatever the answer would be if you just worked left to right without following the order of operations and you're going to guess it and you're going to get it wrong. So remember, whenever you see mixed ones with multiplication and division and addition and subtraction, remember the order of operations. Division and multiplication first, addition and subtraction second. So let's clear this and get started on the problem. So we'll rewrite it. All right, 22 plus 16.86 times 4.7 minus 1.17 equals what? So remember, we're going to start right here. And we're going to start working on this. So if we go back, we go 16.86 times 4.7. Remember, with excuse me, with multiplication and division, we don't need to line the decimal points up. We just need to have it like this, and then just do basic multiplication. So 6 times 7 is 42, carry the 4. 8 times 7 is 56, plus 4 is 60. So put the 0 carry the 6. 7 times 6 is 42 plus 6 is 48. Carry the 4. 7 times 1 is 7 plus 4 is 11. Oh, pen didn't want to work. Carry the 0. So 6 times 4 now is 24. Carry the 2. 8 times 4 is 32 plus 2 is 34. Carry the 3. Sorry, my, my writing is getting progressively worse as this video goes on. 6 times 4 again is 24, plus 3 is 27. Carry the 2. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2 is 6. So we have 2, 4, 8, that's an 8, and that's a 4. Um, let me double check. Yeah, yeah, that's a 4. So 8 plus 4 is 12. Carry the 1. 7 plus 1 is 8, plus 1 is 9. 6 plus 1 is 7. So the answer is 79242. Two. Now remember, we have one decimal place here. We have two decimal places here. So that's for a total of three decimals. Decimal places, I should say. So 1, 2, Three. So this question, 16.86 times 4.7 equals 79.242. So we're going to take this number and we're going to plug it in here in the middle. So we'll rewrite it over here. So we'll do 20, we'll do 22 plus 79.242. 79.242 minus 1.17. 1.17. So now we can just work this problem left to right as we would with any other. So 22, remember we're going to line up the decimal points plus. 79.242. Remember, we can use zeros as placeholders. So that's 2, 4, 2. 9 and 2 is 11. Carry the 1. 
7 plus 2 is 9, plus 1 is 10, 101, and we're just going to bring that decimal straight down here. So now, 22 plus 79.242 equals 101.242. Since I'm running out of space on this whiteboard, we're just going to move this into this place. We'll go to the next page. So 101.242, 101.242 minus 1.17. 1.17 equals what? So now, again, we're just going to line up the, the decimals. And we'll do 101.242 minus. 1.17. Use the zero as the placeholder. 2 minus 0 is 2. 4 minus 7 doesn't work, so we're going to have to borrow from this 2. Make that a 1. 14 minus 7 is 7. 1 minus 1 is 0. Just bring that decimal point straight down. 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 minus 0 is 0, 1 minus 0 is 1, which gives you a final answer of 100.072. So, the original question of 22 plus 16.86 times 4.7 minus 1.17 following the order of operations of doing the multiplication first then working left to right gives you a final answer of 100.072. And finally, number 14 on your sheet, which is very similar to the one we just did, and we'll end with this one on our uh, fractions and decimals and adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing. Number 14 is 10.6 minus 4.2 times 2.48 plus 27 equals what? So remember, big star here, order of operations. You cannot forget that or else you will get the question wrong. Order of operations. In case you forgot, from two minutes ago. Multiplication, division first, addition, and subtraction second. Very, very important. So, on to the question. We'll rewrite it out again. Time point six minus 4.2 times 2.48 plus 27 equals what? So we're going to take out the multiplication and we're going to work on that first. So we're going to go 2.48 times 4.2. Remember, you don't have to have the decimals lined up. 8 times 2 is 16, carry the 1. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9. 2 times 2 is 4, which gives us 496. Put a 0 here as a placeholder. 8 times 4 is 32. Carry the 3. 4 times 4 is 16, plus 3 is 19. Carry the 1. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9. So that gives us a total of 6. 9 plus 2 is 11. 9 plus 4 is 13, plus 1 is 14. Carry the 1, 9 plus 1 is 10. So remember, we have one decimal place, two decimal places. Gives us three decimal spots or places, whatever you want to call it. So we got 1, 2, Three. So now the answer that will go here 
was going to be 10.416. So we'll rewrite that out on the next page. So we have 10.6, 10.6 minus 10.416, 10.416 plus 27. equals what? So 10.6 minus 10, line up the decimal points, 10.416. We can add the zeros as placeholders. Now we have two zeros here, so we're going to have to borrow from this 6 and turn it into a 5, make that a 10, borrow from the 10, turn that into a 9, make that a 10. So 10 minus 6 is 4. 9 minus 1 is 8. 5 minus 4 is 1. Bring our decimal point straight down. 10 minus 10 is 0. So now we have 0 0.184 plus 27. So we'll do it the same way. We'll do 27.0 plus 0 0.184. Use the zeros as placeholders. 4 and 0 is 4. 8 and 0 is 8. 1 and 0 is 1. Bring our decimal point straight down. 27 and 0 is 27. So our final answer to the last question is 27. 0.184. So that's the last question in this tutoring session. I hope it was helpful for, for you and maybe gave you a little more insight on what to expect or how to work your way through decimals and fractions and adding and dividing and all those things that go into it. Hope you got some good use from it and I will see you in the next video.